Great. So thanks, everyone. The talk is going to be, obviously, I'm going to be uh, favoring creating endoleostomies as the best permanent stoma for IBD patients. So these are two main items that we're going to discuss today, whether endoleostomy is better than a cock pouch. And I have, I have had the pleasure to train in high volume centers, first at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, where, where there's a huge IBD population, followed by a Penn State with Dr. Colton, again, uh, high volume centers. And to answer your, 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 your question uh, is that I've never created a cock pouch. That's good idea. Uh, I've never seen creating anyone a cock pouch. Uh, but I have seen uh, bad complications from it. Having said that, obviously endoleostomies is not a risk-less operation either, and we do see some complications from it. So I certainly don't agree with this quote. I don't think we should focus only on our strength, but and on our weaknesses, I think we should focus on our weaknesses to make us better, correct? So we know that endoleostomy patients can have some complications. Why don't we focus on making us better and allowing us to have less complications from it? And obviously, I'm also going to focus on the fact that even the strongest enemy has some weaknesses. There are multiple studies, all of you guys know, uh, assessing the quality of life on patients and the, and the going up proctocolectomy with creation of, of endoleostomy. And it's obvious, correct? Someone who has an endoleostomy doesn't have the same quality of life compared to the general population. But having said that, it's not bad and we can be better. Recent studies have also, have also looked at how well patients adapt to a stoma. Yesterday it was quoted that no one wants to have an endoleostomy, and I think that's correct. But if we do have one, if we need one, can we adapt to it? And the reality is that we can. Some studies have shown that significance, or there's, there's, there's room for adaptation. Although not too significant, uh, there is adaptation to a stoma, and we can make it better. And obviously, we know that patients that have problems with a stoma will have a worse quality of life, and quality of life understanding over uh, the, the, the uh, health rate quality of life as well as the general quality of life. Also patients who need um, persistent uh, professional stoma help after surgeries are more frustrated, correct, have less quality of life. But that's, we're focusing on this, on patients who have issues with endoleostomies. So how can we make it better? And that's, that's why there's been a lot, of, a lot of work from ASCARS where we have guidelines for everything, correct? Since 2015, they've created guidelines. And look at the, the target audience. It's not the nurses. It's not the students. It's actually us. Why? Because there's a huge amount of stomas. And obviously, these are not only endoleostomies, but it's a huge amount of stomas which are created every year. And look at the complication rates with selective and emergent operations. It's very high. If, if you look at any complication rate for any kind of other surgeries, will you accept this complication rates? No. So why, why, why is this happening? And, and look at this. This is a, a risk-adjusted morbidity by hospital. Look at the variation on complication rates on people who have endoleostomies based upon each hospital. I mean, this is, the, the variation is it's, it's tremendous. And, and there is room for improvement. We, we should make ourselves better, correct? Obviously, someone who has an endoleostomy and has uh, issues, that increases the health care costs, increases the morbidity, and, and uh, the frustration of the patients. So as I said, there's evidence and there's room for improvement. And there's variation in complication rates in how we care of, uh, on these patients after surgery, and uh, how we sh uh, should um, proceed in uh, minimizing the clinical variation when we create an endoleostomy. The first thing, it may, may seem stupid, and obviously we, uh, uh, we are, um, I think that a lot of us surgeons uh, know the anatomy of the, of the abdominal wall, but how many times have you seen patients who've had endoleostomies at outside institutions or by someone else who actually have ileostomies either over a crease or places where the patients cannot see the ileostomy, or lateral to rectus muscle, and it's not too uncommon, correct? So we first need to understand and teach and educate our residents where you create a stoma and how you should variate the position of a stoma based upon the patient itself. There's also multiple studies have 
shown. So how, how much should a stoma protrude in order to minimize the complication rates after surgery? And we know that patients who have stomas which are close to the skin or flushed have much more complications, correct? And that's been shown in multiple studies. So this is expert opinion. This, are not, this is not level one evidence, but expert opinion recommend for, for endoleostomies, they should protrude at least two centimeters over the skin. Can stomas be created on, or endoleostomies be created on any kind of patients? Yes. I mean, Dr. Hyman was saying that he doesn't remember the last time he operated on a BMI of 23, and I don't either. We have, we have a bad issue with obesity in this country, and we need to adapt to these patients, correct? So we can create good stomas on super obesity patients, and, and it's a matter of understanding the anatomy of the patient and some tricks in order to protrude the stomas over the skin. The other thing which is important is how, or, uh, how do we create post-operative care pathways to decrease readmissions? One of the issues with endoleostomy is obviously readmissions as a result of dehydration, for example. And with these pathways, we've seen that the readmission rates have decreased, correct? There's also multiple studies have shown that not only we need to focus on how we create a stoma, not only we need to focus on how we need to support those patients after, but I think it's more important how we educate them before, correct? And that has shown that patients who have high education before surgery, who have support by the institution before, during, after surgery, are better at taking care of the stoma and therefore have a better quality of life and less, and less issues. There's less time for proficiency, it decreases length of stay in the hospital, and decreases the frustration of the patients, correct? How many times, I'm, you know, uh, we do review the NIST group data, correct? We audit NIST group data. One of the things that we review is if we do mark these patients before surgery, and by whom? And you will be surprised how many patients who will require an elective stoma are not marked prior to the operation. And again, the follow-up is important. The follow-up is important, especially in the acute, in the short uh, post-operative setting. Uh, randomized control trials have shown that if you care uh, and support this patient after surgery, they, they do, do better, they live an independent life, they have less technical problems, and they adjust better to the uh, stomas. And a bit of our weakness of the enemy, if we can call the enemy the cock pouch, this is the, truly the quote from the Ascar's book. The technical construction of a content ileostomy is conceptually difficult. We're not talking about if it's technically difficult. The conceptuality of the, of the, of the procedure is very difficult. And look how much bowel you are using to create a stoma. This is important because if you do have complications afterwards, you're jeopardizing a lot of small bowel. Correct? So, some of the weaknesses of the cock pouch is that nipple valve slippage remains a very common problem. And this operation is done in very few institutions, correct? Which means that most of the people who do this operation do know what they're doing and have a lot of experience. Even in the best hands, they have a high complication rate with nipple valve slippage, 30% of the patients. Pouchitis, 25% of the patients. Fistula formation, 10%. Obstruction, 5%. And again, it's important that the complications that they see or we see on these patients are difficult to take care of and often require major surgical intervention, jeopardizing a lot of small bowel. Correct? So basically a, a comparison uh, and a summary of, of each procedure. Endoleostomies, I wouldn't say it's not, e it's not uh, difficult to perform on certain patients, but it certainly is much easier than a cock pouch. The endoleostomy does not increase operative time. We do operate on patients who are sick, correct? And uh, 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 increasing the length of the surgery in one hour, one hour, and 30 minutes, or two hours, whatever it takes to do a cock pouch, it's significant. This is the last, one of the last total colectomies that I did. I do operate with patients with residents who are 40 residents, and, and we let them do, correct? And you see a total colectomy endoleostomy on a sick patient, Skin to skin, two hours and four minutes, correct? How much will that add if I need to do a cock pouch? So it does not jeopardize the length of stay, then the, I'm sorry, the small bowel length, the endoleostomy, the cock pouch does. We do it universally. Anyone can do an endoleostomy. Not a lot of people can do a cock pouch. 
it's, it's easier to take care of the complications from the endoleostomy versus the cock pouch. There's no patient selection. Almost everyone can have an endoleostomy, and not everyone can have a cock pouch. What about how these people um, receive care by the family members? No one wants to care uh, or take care of an endoleostomy, correct? But the family, if you educate them, they do accept taking care of these patients. However, we know that any any time we ask a family member, can you pack a wound, for example? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm very concerned I'm going to harm the patient. Imagine telling a family member to drain a cock pouch, introducing a tube. We know probably nothing's going to happen, but they don't know that, correct? So they don't feel comfortable taking care of, of their family members. And also surveillance. Surveillance of endoleostomies are much easier than the continent pouch. So this is a quote from one of the, my last patients, one of the patients I operated uh, uh, in the past. We said, in November, I couldn't get out of bed. This patient had a total colectomy and ileostomy. On May 7th, I ran a full marathon, correct? And she sent us the medal. So this, this demonstrates that there's no limitations on patients who have an ileostomy. The limit is on each individual, and the limit is basically on in your mind setting, correct? I'm a very simplistic guy. I don't try to make things complicated, and I don't, I don't like to I make the life of my patients complicated either, correct? This is a great quote. If your life is complicated, make it simple. If your life is simple, please don't complicate it. Thank you.